day, everyone. Let's open this session today with a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. This is a brand new day you have given to us. Thank you for every day, dear Lord. There is a corresponding measure of favor and grace from you. Even, Lord, at this moment, as we are too here, O Lord God, the preaching and teaching of your word, give us ears that will really hear, minds that will understand, hearts that will receive, receive and Lord, and will to really follow and obey your words. Thank you, dear Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you that you will help us in all this. Make, O Lord God, your word alive to all of us today. I pray for those who will be watching and listening, O Lord God, to this broadcast, wherever they may be in the world. I pray that you will bless them and touch them. I pray for enlightenment to come into their minds. I pray for conviction, O Lord God, in their hearts. And I pray, Lord God, that they will have a strong resolve to obey you in all things. Thank you, the Father God. In Jesus' name, Amen. For the last two Sundays, we've been talking about walking with God. We all know that this is a precious and important invitation. We read in the Old Testament of men and women that walk with God. Classic example, of course, was Enoch, in which the Bible records that specifically he was a man who walked with God. Of course, the others that followed after him, like Noah, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, many others thereafter, they all walked with God. In the New Testament, we see Jesus being introduced to us as the Son of God that was sent by the Father to save us all by giving his life on the cross. But when he started his public ministry, we read in the Gospels how that he went to these men and invited them to come and follow him. Simply put, he invited them to come and take a journey with him. Come follow me or come walk with me and I will make you fishers of men. I will build your life. And so we see the utmost importance of walking with God. It is a privilege. It is an honor. For a man or a woman whom God will speak to him and invite him to come along with him and walk with him. And I pray that as you are watching the day and listening from the comfort of your homes, that if you have not yet taken a decision to walk with God and follow him seriously, I pray that this will be the time that God will speak to you and touch you in your spirit so that you will yield humbly and sincerely to him and start your own journey with him. You will never regret it when you make a decision to follow the Lord. I used for the last two Sundays the first letters of the line walk with God. We started with the, the letter W, which uh, I shared with you corresponds to worship. Walking with God, when God calls us to walk with Him, He calls us to worship Him, to acknowledge His glory and his majesty, his might, his authority, his sovereignty over our lives. 
to acknowledge that God is more than anything and anyone else, that he is truly deserving to receive all worship, all glory and honor and praises. We all know that worship is a combination which means worship. We are giving God the worth, the value that is due unto him. And I know that the word worship entails a lot of uh, meanings, ramifications. And as we continue with these lessons in the following Sundays that will come, we will, by the help of the Lord, might go back to again talking about the importance of worship. The next letter is letter A, and we talk about aligning ourselves with the Word of God. When we walk with God, we have to align ourselves with the Word of God. When God gives us His Word, it is because He wants to guide us, to lead us, to direct our steps so that it will be easier for us to walk with him. And so it is for our own advantage and blessing when we align our walk with the Lord. We do not have the liberty to take our own course or else we will lose our way. But when we align ourselves with what God says, we will be safe, we will be secure, we will be blessed, and we, in, we will enjoy our journey with him. That's why it's so important to really delve into the Word of God. Spend time reading, meditating, studying, and of course with intention of applying the Word of God. Letter L, we talk about that also for a while, and it talks about loving God. We walk with God because we love God. That's easy to understand. When you love someone, you like to walk with him or her. You like to spend time with that loved person of yours. When you love someone, you want to grow deeper. You want to pursue your relationship, your feelings with that person. And that entails a lot of time to spend together. And so we need to walk with God because we love God. We love God. That's why we walk with Him. But also... Loving means loving others who are our fellow pilgrims, our fellow walkers with God, whoever they may be, wherever they may be at the time. We need to love them with all our heart and love them the way God also has loved us and the way God also has loved them. We need to love them by by. Uh, getting along well with them, by being patient with them, by being uh, generous with what we have towards them, by investing into their life, by finding ways to, to bless them, and many, many more. Again, we will return to that very important uh, lesson of loving God and loving our fellow brothers and sisters. The, word, the letter K, we talk about uh, keeping the faith. As we walk with God, we have to keep believing, keep our faith in the Lord. We need to fight for that faith because every step of the way as we walk with God, there will be many trials and testings and difficulties. But the Lord instructs us to hold on to the faith that we have received as believers and followers of Jesus. That's a wonderful uh, privilege the Lord has given us. He gifted us with faith that comes to his word. And he wants us to keep that faith no matter what happens. Talk about that for a short while in our first session the other Sunday. Again, I say, as the Lord will allow us, we'll return to that again in the next Sundays that will come. Then on Sunday, we talk about another letter in Walk with God, letter W again, and we mentioned about 
welcoming or welcoming every circumstance that we will face as we journey with the Lord. You know, when we walk with God, the word walk implies progression. You are not walking when you are standing still. But when you are taking steps one after the other, then there will be progression of your journey. But it means the circumstances of life will change from one to the next. It's like when you are taking a trip or when you are working, the scenery around you changes every time. The view that you see with your eyes changes. You will see flowers and plants. Later on, you will see animals by the road. You will see cars, you will see mountains, valleys, cliffs, and everything. The view changes regularly when you are moving forward in your walk. And so when we walk with God, definitely the seasons and the times will change. Circumstances will change. Sometimes it's easy. The road is fine and good. The situation is most favorable to you and me. But there are times when we walk with God and He leads us in some places which to us is not nice and good to, to behold. We are afraid. We are anxious. We do not like it. If we are given only our chance, we would not go that way. But that is the way where God is walking and he invited us to walk with him. So we follow him. That's why in the book of Psalms, we remember the famous Psalms written by uh, David in Psalm 23. Remember that lesson there. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. You know, sometimes we walk, walking with God. We're walking with God, but sometimes we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. And yet, the writer, David himself said, I fear no evil. Why? Because in this walk, in this journey, I am not alone. God walks with me. I am walking with Him. And so I am confident as I go through this different seasons and circumstances of my life because I know God will not abandon me. He will walk with me all the time. Meanwhile, on my part, I make this decision to also walk with the Lord at all times, wherever He is leading me. And so welcome it. Do not resist it. Welcome it gladly and joyfully. But at the same time, you have to Rizzle against the enemy because the enemy is a wily enemy, is a sly enemy. He works subtly in all these circumstances and he will always try to exploit this situation to his own advantage in order to cause harm, in order to cause pain, in order to plant seeds of doubt in your mind as you're walking with God. So while you welcome these circumstances, you need to Wrestle. You need to learn to fight against the enemy. Fight with faith again, as we have already mentioned early on. So walk with the Lord means welcoming whatever and wherever he is leading you. No complaining, no murmuring, no asking doubtful questions, just enjoying the journey. At the same time, you're able to discern and fight wrestling with faith, exercising your faith in the Lord. We talk about letter I, insulating yourself from negative people. You have to remember that not all men on the face of the earth are men that has faith in God, are men that walk with God. No, there are men that do not walk with God. There are women that do not like to follow God. In fact, there are men that vehemently oppose the will of God. And so if you, you know, 
spend your time with them, you hear the words, you uh, sometimes enjoy their company, you know, uh, comply with what they're asking of you, eventually you might end up uh, compromising in your walk with God. And so letter I would remind us to insulate ourselves from these negative people. We have to exercise discernment in our relationship. The Bible in the letter of Paul uh, tells us to not be equally yoked together with, uh, with non-believers. It's difficult, somebody said, it's difficult to fly like an eagle when you uh, associate yourself with turkeys, you see. So if you want to progress and prosper in your work with God, you need to guard yourself from negative influences around you. The books that you may be are reading, the shows that you are watching frequently. Uh, take notice if these are things that are helping you grow in your walk with God. Or maybe these are things that are um, stopping you or uh, helping you to, to compromise your walk with God. So uh, it is your responsibility as you walk with God to insulate yourself. Uh, I'm not saying that you totally find yourself a uh, room and then you don't go out anymore and just live your life by yourself. No, that's not what the Bible is teaching us. The Bible is teaching us to go out and, and have fellowship with brothers and sisters and reach out to people. But at the same time, the scripture is also warning us against the dangers of spending too much time with people who has nothing to contribute into your spiritual life. And that is why you need to insulate yourself. Now, we also touch a little bit the uh, letter T, which talks about trusting the Lord. Trust God as you walk with Him. He is the one that knows exactly where He is leading you. He is the one that knows exactly the way he is the one that knows exactly the times and the seasons, the weather and everything. So you trust completely yourself unto the Lord. In the first place, he is your number one companion in this world. Remember, he was the one who invited you. He was the one who called you to walk with him. And so trust him. Trust his wisdom. Trust his decisions over your life. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, I start with verse number 5. It talks about uh, the negative effect of uh, believing or trusting in people. And then, start with beginning with verse 7, talks about the blessedness of trusting in the Lord. So let me read. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the man who trusts in men, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parts places of the earth, in a salt land where no one lives. Verse 7 says, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Beautiful is the effect of a person when he puts his life in the Lord completely and thoroughly, when he trusts the Lord for his life, for his future, he will be blessed according to the passage. He will be like a tree planted by the waters that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. 
when there are forthcoming situations that you, when you look at it from your point of view, it looks like it's scary, it's dangerous, it's perilous. And yet because you have trusted your everything, surrendered your everything into the hands of the living God, you can look at these situations and not be shaken. There is no fear in your heart because you have put your trust in the Lord. He has no worries in a year of drought, never fails to bear fruit. This is a beautiful thing when we put our trust in God. That's why the psalmist again, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. As we all know, we are in this season wherein the whole world is being gripped with anxiety and fear and so many questions remaining unanswered. And yet, we cannot waste our time, you know, always dwelling in fear and doubt, in asking questions that has no answers. Better if we trust in the Lord, because in the first place, He's the one who has saved us, He has forgiven us of all our sins, He has given the best gift that He could ever give, His Son, Jesus Christ. Might as well put our trust in Him. Believe Him that He will take good care of us. And not worry for why, what, what, what will happen. What will happen? Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about, about uh, what is the after effect of this virus. Can, will we return to our normal, normal way of life before the virus came? How about our, uh, you know, our business, our employment, our church services? What will become of them? Will we get those things back after this virus? Again, let be sure. Right now, even the governments, you know, are not sure what will be the effects, what will be the result. But one thing is sure, God knows exactly what lies ahead of us. He knows our future more than he knows everything because he knows everything. He remember he's Alpha and Omega. He is he is the beginning and he is the end. So why instead of worrying, let's trust the Lord. Let's trust that He will provide us with all that we need. Let's trust that He will keep us. He will keep us and He will protect us, especially when we are fully engaged in the assignment that the Lord has given us. Let's trust that he will you know, sustain us all throughout according to the days that he has foreordained for all of us. There is a passage in scripture that says, as your days, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall be your strength. So shall be your provision. So God will never leave us nor forsake us. So let's trust him. Let's be confident in his care, in his promises. Bible reminds us to cast all our cares unto the Lord because he cares for us. He cares for us. Right now, you can pause for a few seconds and remind yourself, God cares for me. God cares for me. Jesus was telling his disciples, there is not a single sparrow that will fall onto the ground without the Father knowing about it. How much more for you? He was telling his disciples to relax and just trust him. Trust his leading. Trust his uh, orchestration. His direction for their lives. Doesn't mean that it, everything, uh, every day will be, you know, wonderful. There will be no, you know, problems. There will always be problems. And yet, God will not allow us to face these problems by ourselves. He will be with us. So let's trust Him. I would continue to encourage you to trust in the Lord. Let me proceed to the next letter here, letter H. Walking with God means putting our hope in the Lord as we walk with Him. You know, trusting and hoping in the Lord, they are 
together. They go together. When you trust God, you have hope for what will happen in the future. Paul was writing this uh, message to the Christians in Rome, in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And it says here, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in Him. You notice that? As you trust in Him, God will fill your heart with hope as well as with joy and peace. When you trust God, you will, your heart will be filled with hope. Your heart will be filled with joy. Your heart will be filled with peace. You enjoy your journey with God. You are a person full of hope. But not, that, that's not the only uh, message here. Let me finish the verse. It says also, So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God fills you with hope so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know this world in which we live in. If there is one commodity that is so much lacking in this world, it is hope. Aside from joy and peace, my hope is really one thing. Right? Especially now, many people are being depressed, full of anxiety, can hardly sleep. They're thinking about the, 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 the many things that may, may happen. You know, maybe the Antichrist will come. Well, the Antichrist will surely come because it is already written. The end of the world will come because it is already written. Jesus will come because it is already written. But we cannot spend our moments always thinking about these things, worrying about these things. Instead, we can spend our time doing the will of God. We can spend our time doing good things. We are already prepared in Jesus. Our lives has already been made secure in Christ Jesus. When you have repented of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus lives in you. His Spirit also resides in you. Your name has been written in the book of life. Your sins has been forgiven. That is a wonderful assurance in the Lord. Now, what you need to do is get involved in the work of the Lord. Full of hope, full of joy, full of peace. We're not saying that we will not take extra care in uh, the way we live. We have to be careful at the same time. But we need to be a people of hope. In this hope that the Bible talks about, we have to hope for the best. All the time. Hope for the best. And yet, at the same time, we need to prepare for the worst. That's a combination. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. When the worst will happen, you are still trusting in God. You are still believing and hoping in God. It does not change your connection and your relationship with God. God will give you the ability to cope up when these changes will happen. Your heart will continue to overflow with peace, with joy, and with hope. Your hope is not in the things of the world. Your hope is in God, His promises, His word. Your hope in, is in what Christ has purchased on the cross that He has reserved for you. Hope that is best purchased by the blood of Jesus for you. And yet, He calls us to overflow, live a life overflowing with hope so that people around us, especially those who has no relationship with Jesus Christ and are scared and are anxious and are depressed, when they can see this hope overflowing in and through our lives, they might be drawn to Jesus because of what they are observing from us. So, I tell you, brothers and sisters, allow God to fill your heart with hope. Invite Holy Spirit. Read His Word. And be filled with the hope that only comes from Him. There is no hope from the world. There is no hope from the promises of men. There is no hope from the promises of politicians. They make so many promises that they themselves know they cannot fulfill. But when God gives us His Word, He is committed to fulfill that Word because He is the God that do not 
life. So fill your heart with hope. Welcome the joy of the Lord in your heart. Now let me proceed. I have three more items here. Remember, this is about walking with God. So walk with God as we walk with God. Letter G, God reminds us to give ourselves generously for the good of others, for the glory of God. We walk with God by giving ourselves completely and thoroughly for the good of others and for the glory of God. You cannot walk with God and live your life selfishly. You cannot. It is impossible. When you walk with God, you live your life generously for others. Your time, your talent, your treasure, they are for others because you are a person of hope and your hope comes from being trustful in the Lord. You know, in, a, in, in difficult situation, there is always the tendency to withhold, you know, because that is a, a, a spirit of self-preservation. That's a human attitude or a human feeling. We always want to uh, uh, give ourselves first, preserve ourselves. But that is not the right attitude. When, when God calls us to walk with Him, He calls us to to put God first and then others before ourselves. That's why there was a song being sung by little children in Sunday school, uh, uh, Joy, Joy, Jesus, Others, and You. Huh? Jesus, Others, and You. What a wonderful way to spell joy. Yeah? So Jesus, God is number one, and then others before yourself. And when you follow that, then you will have the joy of the Lord in your life. So give yourself completely and totally. Don't hide. Don't come up with all these excuses. Just serve. Just 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 find people who are in need and, and, and serve them. You remember the story of the widow woman during the time of Elijah? She was challenged by Elijah to cook her last meal. She said we were we're in a very difficult situation. This is our last meal. This is the last uh, measure of flour, last oil, and I will cook it and I will eat it together with my son. And I know we know we will die because no more, nothing more. But then Elijah told her, "Yes, please cook it and then serve me first. Serve me first. Wow, that's a challenge there, right there. But actually." Elijah was not exploiting the woman. Instead, Elijah was giving the woman the opportunity to experience a miracle in her life, but only if she will serve first the others. Only if she will serve first the man that appeared on her doorstep. And that was no ordinary man because that was the prophet of God, the man of God, Elijah. And as we know, the rest of the story, when she obeyed, when she acted in faith to the challenge of Elijah to serve him first, the rest of the story know that there was a miracle that she experienced. Her flower did not run dry. Her oil was never used up until the whole famine, season of famine was over. You know, you will never lose when you put God first and when you put others first. You will never lose when you live yourself a generous life. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, those of you who are a little bit struggling today because, you know, there's been no work for the last three weeks, last month, maybe six weeks now, there was no work. You know, your income has been uh, reduced to uh, almost nothing. You are anxious about where will you get your next meal. But let me remind you, if you were walking in alignment with the Word of God, obeying the instructions of God, especially in the area of giving, generously, you know, lovingly, faithfully, cheerfully, you were giving yourself away cheerfully, serving others, you were giving your money, you know, you were tithing, you were 
to have a giving offering. But if you're living that way, you need not be anxious about your provision because you will experience a miraculous provision of God in your life. God cannot do away with His Word. God will stand up and back up His Word in your behalf. But if you were a Christian and you were living selfishly, you were stingy, you hardly give your offering, you're, you're not giving your... You're, you're tight, you're not sowing, you're not planting. Now comes this testing, season of testing. You will be in a very difficult situation. That's why maybe, the re that's the reason maybe why you are anxious and worried. But if you're just following the Lord, no worry. God will provide for you. How? I do not know. But what I know is, He will provide for you. He will never leave you, nor abandon you. There's a verse in uh, Psalms, uh, I do not have time to go there and read, but it says there, uh, I, have I have been young and now I am, I am old, yet I have never seen a righteous man forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. So when you are walking in the will of God, God will provide for you. So just, just give generously. Let their all means overcome all the challenges, all the pressures, all the testings, just you know, overcome them, don't yield to them, just overcome them, uh, fight the good fight of faith, stand your guard uh, in First Corinthians 15 verse 58, we know this verse, Paul was writing to the Christians in Corinth, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor of the Lord will not be in vain. So you overcome in the book of Revelation, the message to the seven uh, churches, uh, the Holy Spirit was always reminding them, he who overcomes, he who overcomes, he who overcomes. Because God, when he invited you to walk with him, he invited you to overcome whatever you will face in life as you journey with him. Now, last item before we close this session uh, today is the letter D. And it means devote yourself to the assignment that God has given you. When the Lord invited you to walk with Him, He also at the same time gave you the opportunity to work with Him, to labor with Him. Remember, we are co-laborers with God. And so He has assignment that He has given to us. What is the assignment that God has given to the church? Go and make disciples of all nations. We read that in Matthew 28, verse 19, 20. Go make disciples of all nations. As we follow Him, as we walk with Him, He invites us to partner with Him in this highest enterprise, fulfilling the kingdom agenda of the Lord. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that also, also come to repentance. There's still a vast number of people all over the world that has not yet come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is our assignment it is our assignment as the church of Jesus Christ to do our best in reaching out, in sharing the good news. We share the good news with our lips. We share the good news with our life. It is our responsibility to shine this light to others in the hope that they too will find their way back to the Lord, to Jesus Christ and be forgiven. So devote yourself to the calling. Do not Excuse yourself because life is hard and difficult because there is this and there is that. So I am excused. No, devote yourself. Wherever you go, represent the Lord as your Savior and as your, as, as your Redeemer. I remember Abraham, we read the story early on in a book, Genesis, starting with Genesis chapter 12. We all know God called Abraham to join him with him into the promised land that the Lord has given him. We read in the accounts there that wherever Abraham would go, the first thing that he will do upon arriving in this new place was to build an altar. Why was he doing that? Because he was declaring his connection, his relationship with the God who called him. At the same time, he was reminding himself to whom he was in relationship with, to whom his life belonged to at this time. That his life no longer was of his own, but that his life now belongs to the God who spoke to him, the God who called him. So he would offer an altar, he would make a sacrifice. All the time, 
in the place where he would arrive, first thing that Abraham would do was to build an altar. He was devoted to the assignment that God has called him. He witnessed his, he, with his life. He witnessed, he witnessed with his actions. He, wished, he witnessed with his conduct and his behavior. People around started to notice that this man, Abraham, was a different man because he practiced his relationship with God by the way he walked, by the way he did his life. And so, brothers and sisters, God is calling us to walk with him. If there is a time wherein we need to walk with God, it is now. I'm sharing this with you and I am challenging you just in case you're walking with God and you walk with God for the past month, past years, was not really a healthy walk with God. You were doing some, you know, uh, detours along the way. You were always stopping in some corner or in some place. And uh, then again, you walk again for a couple of days and then stop again for months and weeks. I am challenging you. Return to the ways of God. This is a time that God is asking him to take seriously this opportunity to walk with him. Humble yourself before the Lord. Repent of your, of your shortcomings, of your sins. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Invite the fire of heaven to fall upon you. And let him rekindle your heart so that when you walk with God, you walk with him with passion. You walk with him with fire, with intensity. You walk with him with a desire to lay down everything of him for his glory and for his honor. You walk with him because you love him, because you want to honor him. Like the Apostle Paul, he says, my goal is to glorify the Lord. My goal in life is to glorify the Lord. In life or in death, I want to glorify the Lord. So that is the challenge that I leave you uh, today. Again, let me ask you, how is your walk with God? Just in case you are watching this uh, broadcast and you do not have yet a relationship with God, maybe you think that you're a Christian because you were born into a Christian family, but, but just because you were born into a Christian family does not, that does not necessarily make you a Christian because to be Christian, you have to personally, intentionally, by the act of your own free will, repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come into your life. You have to make that full surrender, yielding yourself to him, relying on the finished work of Jesus Christ as the only way for your sins to be forgiven. If you have not done that, you can do that today while you are listening. Right in the comfort of your own home, you can pray a simple prayer. Jesus, I'm turning over my life to you. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry I was living my life by myself. Now I want to live this life following you, walking with you. Let me now pray uh, for all of you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your reminders and challenges and teachings for all of us, Lord. Father, I pray right now for those who have been watching this broadcast of Lord, listening intently. I pray that they will receive inspiration and encouragement and strengthening in their faith as they continue to walk with you. I pray that they be inspired, Lord God, to even more walk with you intimately and that, Lord, they will be able to hear you, discern your ways, and so that they can partner with you. And right now, there is a world out there that is in need, Lord God, of an experience and encounter with you and your looking for those whom you may want, who, those whom you can use, O Lord, as your instruments. I pray that all of us will become uh, willing and excited instruments in your hands. I pray, Lord God. I pray for the others, Lord God, who are uh, very new in the faith and needs to uh, be encouraged and be comforted, that they will receive the potion tonight. I pray for those who have not yet come to know you, that they will come to know you. Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, design with them and nudge them, Lord God, that they won't delay this important decision in their lives because tomorrow might be too late. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the joy of knowing you. Thank you for filling our hearts with hope that comes from the Holy Spirit, hope that brings joy and peace, and let this hope overflow, Lord God, to the world around us at this moment. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory and honor and praise to Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Thank you for watching PCC Podcast. If you are blessed by the message, just click the subscribe button to get updated with our latest uploads.